As I've said before, I've had quite a lot of different jobs. I've interacted with many, many different types of people, with inquiries, with complaints. The general rule of thumb that me and anyone I've ever known who's ever worked in customer facing jobs has, if you have an issue in any kind of customer service -y place, do tell the staff, but nicely and you'll be rewarded. I've had plenty of customers wave me over in a restaurant to say, I'm really sorry, but we've been waiting over half an hour for our food and it's just really frustrating not knowing when it's gonna come. If you're nice, I will genuinely make sure that your food is next. If it's not automatically next, I'll move it to the front of the queue and then deal with the punches and verbal abuse from the chefs. Why are they all like that? If you're very polite about it, you might even get a free round of drinks for your waiting. And if you're waiting for one or two meals specifically for quite a while, if you're nice about it, I might knock them off the bill because I am not the problem. For nice customers, I've told them not to worry about the change and even out the till with coins from my tip. I've stopped what I'm doing to help them carry drinks back to their friends in a busy venue. I've taken a minute aside from a very busy bar to make up a mocktail for a designated driver who's feeling a bit left out. I've lent them charges. I've lent them my phone. I once donated a much needed tampon from my bag in the staff room to a terrified looking lady in a very nice white dress. I will bend over backwards for good people, as will many of my friends, if you're nice. If you're not nice, you will get nothing. And in my humble opinion, it is the duty of those of us not working in American customer service style chains to give these people nothing, because that's what they deserve. Their hatred is fueled by the fact that in many establishments across the country, employees have to adhere to their horrible demands. Otherwise, people 20 stages up towards the top will have them fired. In smaller businesses, we don't have to do that. I think you're a dick. My manager thinks you're a dick. The owner thinks you're a dick and he's just banned you from the restaurant for being a dick. But the fact that I am now well trained in how to not back down to these people doesn't mean that they don't try. And I have had plenty of horrible and ridiculous experiences with customers too. On my first ever day on the phones while working at a call center, I got called an idiot monkey at a computer. That was lovely. I was a teenager. One time at a bar I worked in, we were just about to shut the bar and these very loud men came up to try and order one last round of drinks. But after a few sentences of interacting with them, they were slow in their words, I couldn't get any sense out of them for what they wanted to order. So I figured they probably didn't need any more alcohol. I decided not to serve them and I walked away. Despite not being lucid enough to notice any of the questions that I was asking them not two seconds ago, they definitely noticed this. I made it about five meters away before one of them in a rage just shouted, WENCH! WENCH! What year is it? Sorry mate, I'll be right with you. It's just a horse has just walked in through the barn doors and oh, looks like someone's crashed his penny farthing into the side of the road. <laughs> One time I was working in an Italian restaurant and someone had ordered a fish steak. I took them over their food. They seemed pretty pleased with it. I did the usual check back about five minutes later, like, is everything all right with your food, everyone? And they all nodded politely and asked for some more water. At the end of the meal, I was collecting their plates and confirming that everything had been satisfactory, but the fish steak customer was not looking happy. So I pressed for a more detailed answer and he was like, well, it was practically raw. Raw? I can guarantee you it's not raw, it'll have been temperature probed just like everything else. Well, it's absolutely undercooked. Oh, I mean, it'll have been cooked the same way as all the other ones we've served tonight, and we haven't had any complaints, but if you do have a particular preference, I'm sure the chef would have been more than happy to recook it for you. I did ask. The chef probably wouldn't have been more than happy to recook it for him, but he would have recooked it for him. Well, it's too late now. Yep, you, uh, you sure have eaten the entire thing there, haven't you? The entire thing. Well, I didn't enjoy it. To be honest, I'm fairly sure it wasn't even safe to eat. Right, again, you have... You have eaten the entire thing. So... In future, honestly, we'd be more than happy to remake something for you, but please let us know straight away. Right. Did you lick the plate? What is wrong with people? One time, it was a busy shift, we were clearing the floor. It was pretty much kick out time, but the door staff were letting everyone finish their drinks. One member of staff was pouring a very full bottle bin towards the back areas. You know the ones. They look like this. Or this. Except they absolutely don't. They usually look like this. And in particular, the wheels look like this. Or they look like uh, nothing because they are not there. There's just a jaggedy, spiky, dirty, blunt double blade full of tetanus. So as the bin was making its way across the floor, one of the jaggedy bits got caught and the whole bin toppled over, taking its driver with it. So he trips over the bin, smacking his shins right into the edges as he falls over and bottles cascade out of it. Sometimes seeing someone fall is funny. Sometimes. But sometimes you see someone fall and it's pretty bad and it looks sore and you do the <sighs> And sometimes someone falls and they're clearly hurt and um, it's a good idea to make sure that they are not fatally injured. There was a group of like 10 people gathered near where this happened, all dressed up very respectfully for their night out, all probably like in their early 40s, you know, like adults. They'd been a little bit annoying to deal with for some of the night, but thank God this had happened around a group of people who could make sure he was okay, right? Nope. They literally stood there in a circle, pointed and laughed like cartoon bullies. <laughs> ah, maybe he'll cry. He struggled to get back to his feet, was visibly in pain, and then they just like, carried on pointing and laughing. So a decision was made that because it was pretty much kick out time anyway, these people can now leave. 
because they're assholes. A decision which they did not appreciate and they were demanding plastic cups to take the remainder of their alcohol out with them. But I wasn't having that. I'm not going to see a friend get mocked and then just move on with my life. So I went over to put things right. When she saw me, one of the women in the group realised that I worked there and tried to like report the incident to me afresh with lies. As if one, I didn't already know what had happened and two, I wasn't obviously going to take the side of the people I work with. As if this was the most unfair thing that had ever happened in history. So I corrected her. What happened is, someone got hurt and you laughed instead of helping, which quite frankly I think is disgusting. And she like, she couldn't function with this summary. She was momentarily speechless and breathless until she managed to be like, <gasps> who the fuck do you think you are? And I said, hi, my name's Kim. I'm the bar manager. And she was like, I'm a mother. First of all, if you're setting the example of laughing at strangers when they get genuinely quite hurt, bit of a shit mum. Also, it's not really relevant, is it? And now that she just quite aggressively sworn in my face, it was personal. I'm not about to be intimidated by a shit mum. So I decided, on balance, they probably didn't need the remaining alcohol sitting in their dirty little glasses. So I confiscated the plastic takeout cups. What can I say? I'm an incredible environmentalist. What's that, Greta? You're welcome, mate. They made their way to the door trying to complain about me and the woman turns around being literally held back by other people shouting I am not going to be spoken to like that by a little girl in gym shoes. The fucking gym shoes? Like... Plimsolls? What? I was wearing basically like these. Cause I walk a lot in my job. You find me a restaurant or bar manager that works front of house and doesn't wear trainers and I'll show you a fool. <laughs> One time a man was really rude to me about the fact that when I'd run out brand new onto a busy bar, I hadn't immediately served him. So I was like, look mate, I'm sorry. I've just come out here. I don't know who's been waiting longer. I'll get to you as quick as I can. But he just like rudely waved his face in my <laughs> face in my hand. But he just like rudely waved his hand in my face like he wanted me to shut up. So I was like, look mate, it's busy, but I'm a person. I'm just doing my job. There's no need to be rude. And he was like, <coughs> just pour my fucking pint. So obviously I stopped pouring his pint and moved on to someone else. And then after that, I went back to him. He called me childish. I explained that I wasn't being childish. I was just asking to be treated with like a minimum level of human decency, which he did not provide. And he said something like, respect goes both ways, darling. Yes. Yes, it does, sir. My issue with these people usually isn't that they're saying this stuff to me, but that I now know that they would be fully prepared to say this stuff to my tiny, tiny members of staff. Which is why, when I reluctantly went to give him his drinks and he said, This is why you're just a fucking barmaid. I made an effort to slam those drinks on the bar just hard enough that he got lightly splashed with beer. And then he called me a slag. I love Christmas. He, it turned out, worked for the Royal Mail. That is not a fancy enough job that you're allowed to look down on other people. I mean, no job is a fancy enough job that you're allowed to look down on other people for theirs. But I just want insight, you know? Do you just love the post? Also, again, bar maid? These people are very strange. I decided at the time that if he got kicked out for this interaction, he would walk away from the situation like, she was childish, I threw a tantrum and that's what got him kicked out. So instead, security had a stern word with him and later he came back to apologize to me. I shouldn't have called you a slag, love. I got two daughters. Bit of a shit dad. <laughs> but I have to say, despite the genuine aggression from some of these people, the most shocking one, I guess, was uh, it was a busy venue shift. I'd been working on the bar. I'd had to nip to the back for a little bit. And when I came out, I was faced with a sea of people, the entire length of the bar, three humans deep. Time is a ticking. And the customers were all doing that sad little face they do when they genuinely have been waiting quite a while and they're not being demanded and they're not being impatient. And the sparkle of hope in their eyes is fading away as they realize they've made a grave error in which section of the bar they chose to stand at. I mean, why do people who want to order cocktails always gather in clumps, even when they don't know each other? How do they plan it? I serve one person, they just want a couple of pints, bish bash bosh, serve them. Next person. Person. Go. Next person. I'm doing what you have to do in busy bar work and serving multiple people at a time. I'm trying my best. The next person's up and she orders like a gin and tonic and a vodka and coke or something and then... Or can I charge my e-cig? What? I need to charge this? Right. I'm sort of a bit busy at the moment, so I carry on serving her a drink. Loads of people ask to charge their phones or whatever behind the bar all the time. Some bars are fine with it, some bars have a really strict rule on it and it's an absolute no. And some people will accept that no, and some people will try and bribe the staff. Usually pretty successfully too, actually. I mean, all rules have a price. But in that place I worked in, we usually said that as long as the staff member was willing to arrange it and the customer knew that it was at their risk, it wasn't really a big deal. As long as they were polite about it. But this time it was like, there were like 500 people in a room that's kind of small for 500 people. And it was clearly very, very busy. So I just needed to get her her drinks. I just need to charge this. And I just need to serve all of these people that you can see with your eyes. Can you not just charge it over there? Do you have a charger? No. Then no, I need to serve drinks, not charge things for you. Ugh, surely someone in the building has a charger for this. In the building? How far do you want me to go? There's gotta be someone with the right charger. Yeah, and if you go find them, maybe we can rediscuss. But right now, I need to serve all these people who are staring at this. But she just sighs in frustration at me and I'm like, okay, at the very least, can you wait until we're not this busy? The customers near me at this point are giving me that very British shed tart of disapproval. They're on my side. They're telling me that with their eyes, but never their voices. 
Never their voices. I move on to take an order from the next person while Vape Lady finishes making a card payment and with much delay finally accepts my decision to not hold up 99% of our customers just for her. But she hasn't quite finished our conversation yet. Fine, she says, but I work at A&E. And if you won't help me, maybe I won't help you. Yep, that was what I heard her say. If I experience a medical emergency and I'm rushed to A&E and she's on shift there, she won't help me. But I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. You know, if you think you've heard a borderline death threat, it's always best just to make sure. So I pause the man I'm now serving. Sorry, one second, mate. Sorry, are you saying that because I won't find a charger for your vape, you're gonna let me die? And I don't know if I expected her to backtrack or what, but she absolutely didn't. She took her card out of the machine, stared me down and went, asshole, and then walked away. Wow. Pun of Carlsberg, was it, mate? Quite often, I see non-customer servicey people complain about how often customer servicey people are frustrated about our jobs. I think something they don't seem to understand is that we don't hate helping people and adhering to specific requests and engaging with others. We just see a side of customers that you probably never have to see whilst trying to do your job. They're horrible.